This is Batman Arkham City running on a 360 at 720p. The game came out in 2011. It's one of my more pleasant memories of that franchise from Rocksteady. I am Couch Coop. Asylum was the first in 2009 and we also had Origins. But I'm going to show you a little bit of Arkham Knight because it came up for some scrutiny wasn't as good as the previous games and we've just seen an exodus from this style of batman game from rocksteady very interesting article from the learned accurate and reputable ign telling us in 2016 that the whole thing's been knocked on the head but there's massive rumors of something called arkham shadow coming out of rocksteady for 2024 it was announced in sort of january kind of gone a bit quiet arkham knight is also on psn extra doesn't sit on the SSD for the PlayStation 5, but does have some boost from that machine on backward compatibility. So it sits on the HD, but dang, it looks good and runs smooth. And it's one of the more spectacular open world Batman games out there. It's just not up to speed with those previous games. We're gonna look at it in a bit more detail and we're gonna discuss what could happen to those previous games and what we want out of an open world Arkham ninth generation video game, which just could be amazing. Just done the Spider-Man material for the open world list. Ninth gen can really produce massive cities and populated ones. It was one of the things we saw with Spider-Man one and two and Miles Morales is that you can have people all around these streets still do the crimes still have the same systems i'm super excited at what we could see coming out of rocksteady this year if they adhere to those amazing specs insomniac spider-man games too do you see those cupcakes this intro sort of blew me away it's locked this section it's not part of the open world system so they've pushed on a bit of the visuals but it's pretty damn dark scarecrow hallucinations really nice textures i was like oh my god i'm in for a rip roaring ride with this batman game this is the first time i've ever really seen this I can't actually remember what put me off purchasing this game when it came out. I may have not even owned a 360, I might have been living abroad, it might have just been the cost and the bad reviews, but it was only until now that it's gone to a subscription service that I can probably look at some of these textures, the size of the world, so impressed with the visuals. The age of this game, 2015, that is almost unbelievable. So Red Dead hasn't been out, Monster Hunter World isn't out, God of War isn't out. This is unreal visuals for 7th gen systems. But it is right at the end of that platform's life. So they're really utilising every ounce of power. Same thing, probably got ghosts in that slot for the PlayStation 4 as well, being one of the last exclusives to come out on that system and also being a visual marvel. Nothing's really changed with those systems from Arkham City. In actual fact, looking at the Arkham City footage, it was difficult for me to distinguish the two. It's only that vehicle, which we are gonna to get to, that separates these two games on a larger scale. All that hook stuff, even the combat combos, some of the cutscenes have been improved slightly, but it does feel ever so slightly dumbed down on the things you can do, where you can jump to, and who you can interact with. And of course, the whole of the city has been evacuated. So the only things that you have to interact with are the criminals. There's no pedestrians, there's no NPCs to speak of. It's quite a deserted feeling map. You are given a half decent bit of range to work with early doors. In the original games, you had to kind of unlock that baton ring and some of the electricity components, but this is like straight up use your gadgets and call in that card. Now, let's have the conversation about the vehicle. <laughs> Although it looks absolutely beautiful, 
This is one of the biggest game-breaking open world mechanics I've ever seen introduced into a Batman game. It is OP, you can strafe, you've got missiles. It switches the whole thing on its head and tries to be a sort of budget Mad Max clone. It's crazy weird and it is everywhere. You've got puzzles, you're jumping from rooftop to rooftop, even feeling that nitrous injection over the jumps has its limitation. Didn't gel too well with me when it was introduced and I definitely think that was something that came up in those original reviews. I need to interrogate the driver and find out what he knows. Stay back, you lay a faker on me, they'll kill you! Those modern Insomniac Spider-Man games owe a lot to the early Arkham combat model and the flow and the ebb and the coolness of the cutscenes between moves and opening up new equipment and gear or moves themselves really gives some satisfaction to interacting with these criminals. Something tells me this was a part of the plan. I think they knew if they meddled around with that combat too much, then there would be even more of a walk away from the franchise. But the numbers on this, it potentially killed all of it. And we're having to wait nine years before there's even a tiny noise from the studio about following up on this format. I personally think a brand new Night to the End Batman game that's set in an open world similar to the Spider-Man series would just do incredibly well. I think DC needs an injection into the franchise anyway on systems because the only decent modern fruition of Batman at the moment is in Injustice 2, I think. Gods Among Us, it's got a pretty cool Batman in it. Are you old enough to remember the original NES Batman from that first film, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, the Joker, it was a side scrolling, almost like Barnet Commando. You could wall grab, it was quite ahead of its time, and it was really the start for me of my love for Batman video games. It also featured the car and a winch that let you go around corners at high speed by clinging onto lampposts. That might be my earliest superhero video game badass memory. Sticking with that badass theme, because of this game's age, you do get all of the tiny free bolt-on DLCs that came out over its period of sale. And there's loads of it, including the really old school outfits and a skin for the vehicle from the original TV series. That stuff is pretty awesome. And you've got the tagline, I am wearing hockey pants. <laughs> You have to do a little, like, daffy duck at the end. Hockey pants! One pair of actual, a selection of body parts belonging to one mask and jacket worn by Anarchy, a.k.a. Lonnie Machen. Also, talk about rubbing your nose in it with the museum. It's like, do you remember all these amazing times you had with awesome bosses in the previous games? Well, you can forget about that, because it's you in the car, neon lights. It's got absolutely nothing to do with Batman, loads of that gameplay. But this, though, there's something cool about that blend of old and new. That sort of works, nearly makes up for a lot of that vehicle gameplay. If we had a vehicle in a ninth gen version of this, if we had a home hub, an actual bat cave that you went down into that was physically there all the time, that you would open up, excavate, XCOM style, knock out the walls, get a butler in, and then just slowly get a better grip of the crime wave that's in Gotham adjacent to you. It would just make such a great game loop. I think we might be seeing that with the newer one. If it's an always online hero shooter, I probably will lose my mind. They won't do that. Suicide Squad did not work out very well and superhero games are on very rocky ground, I feel at the moment. Only Spider-Man 2 is holding that crown steady and only because it's offline single player and got a rich environment for you to be a superhero in that's the important thing you need to create a cool world otherwise all of these powers ridiculous cars and crazy ui mean nothing i 
I suppose I should say thank you for living out that mini fantasy about what we could get from Rockstar and Batman going forward. And I strongly suggest you do have a look at Arkham Knight. There's no reason not to at the moment with it sat on extra and it being a sort of lesson in how you bugger up a good series. Go back to Arkham City. That's the sweet spot for me. You've still got the cool open world. You've still got the cool stories. Everything is kind of in the right place with it. And if you want to go really old school, sure, have a look at the original Asylum. I have been Couch Coop, and I will see you down there. Hockey pants!